Okay, in this scene, we're going to talk about familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia. And the reason why I put a picture of these hippos over here, well, the family of hippos over here, is to help us remember family of hippos for familial hypo. And in fact, they're high up on this screen over here to help us remember high. So the family of hippos that are high for familial hypocalciuric hypercalcemia. But you don't need that mnemonic to understand what's going on over here. It's actually a quite intuitive disorder. The name gives it away. Familial because it's inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion. Hypocalciuria, because hypo, less, calciuria, calcium in the urine. There's less calcium in the urine than usual, and we'll explain why. And hypercalcemia, because there's more calcium in the blood. And again, we'll explain why. So most cases of this condition are associated with loss of function mutation in CASR, the calcium sensing receptor. This is a receptor found on multiple tissues, such as the parathyroid gland and the kidney. We want to focus on the parathyroid gland. So the calcium sensing receptor is on the parathyroid gland. Normally when there's high levels of calcium in the body, it goes to the calcium sensing receptor and it tells the parathyroid gland to decrease the amount of PTH, parathyroid hormone. In this condition, however, since the calcium sensing receptor is defective, more calcium is needed. A high level of calcium is needed to maintain a normal PTH level because more of it, the calcium is needed to tell the parathyroid gland to release PTH in order to reduce the calcium levels. And that's why we find the following lab values in this condition. There's going to be an increased free calcium level, but PTH will also be high because more calcium is needed to tell the parathyroid gland to release parathyroid hormone. And of course, there's going to be a decrease in phosphate because that's inversely related to the free calcium. How is diagnosis made? Because if you think about it, this condition shares the same lab values as primary hyperparathyroidism, where there's too much parathyroid hormone. So the answer is we check for the calcium in the urine, because in this condition, as we mentioned, there's going to be a hypocalciuria, less calcium in the urine. And it's important to note that this condition is usually benign. It doesn't really require treatment, but sometimes calcimimetics, which mimic the action of calcium, are given. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene. Please subscribe to our channel. It really helps things grow. Ask me questions if you like, and take care.